Welcome to the Contingency Plan Podcast. My name is Jedi Master David, and with me as always is Darth Austin. Hello, everyone. Back from another extended hiatus. I don't think we can call it that anymore. <laughs> the holiday hiatus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Have you burned off all the ham yet? I think so. You, well, you, you know me. I, I don't really go for the holiday meats as much as the holiday sides. What, you don't like all the extra sodium? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, yeah, we all like a little salt, but, uh, I mean, I, I, I actually enjoyed ham. Well, you made the ham this year. I made all the other sides, and you made the ham for, uh, for Christmas. And, yeah, uh, yeah no, that, it was a good ham. It was actually a really nice ham. Thank you. I was just glad I didn't buy, like, a 20-pounder. Like everyone else seems to. I don't like leftovers. You even well, bought... Well, I like leftovers, but I don't like ham for leftovers. Uh, well, <laughs> the, the ham you bought was almost a bit too big. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Honestly. But, uh, but yeah, folks, so holidays have come and gone. Uh, Christmas, New Year's, all that good sort of jazz. So hopefully you guys had a good, healthy, productive, not choking anyone holiday season. <laughs> Um, to be quite frank, uh, it, mine wasn't so great, honestly, had some family health stuff come up. Um, Mm -hmm. so that put a major damper on Christmas. New Year's was pretty good though. Uh, I think that that went, went by pretty, pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah. It was a good time. Got to watch a little football and get a little crazy New Year's Eve. It was a good time. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, no doubt. Um, so, yeah, time to end the podcast. No, I'm just kidding. That's terrible. Yeah. Oh, boy. 2022 announcement. No more podcast. I don't even know. I don't even know what to do anymore. I don't even I don't even know. Maybe we should go back to the old days where we had those stupid, corny, uh, you know, canned jokes at the beginning of every podcast. You want to go back to doing that? Is that like our podcast resolution? Go God, backwards? Didn't we only do that like the first year? <laughs> mm. We haven't done that for a while. I don't even remember the structure of it. It was it was dumb, but it made it made us giggle a little bit. Yeah. Well, I mean, all the different sound effects and everything. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> I did add sound effects. I forgot about that. Well, um, on the technological side, we both have upgraded technology. Um, I'm now hopefully running. Hopefully, you notice. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Hopefully, um, you were previously running off of the zoom h4n and it just seemed like all of a sudden we just had a ton of problems with that stupid unit uh either it was checking itself to the external mic or whatever it didn't matter it just we figured out how to adjust the gain properly on it and then after we did that it all just went to hell Mm -hmm. um so i chose to make an investment in the zoom pod track p8 which is hilarious. It, it basically looks like a straight up soundboard thing, but it's actually <laughs> been really fun to play with. And m- eventually I might program these nine buttons with various sound effect things. And, and I might play with it in that regard. Hell, we might even just do the entire, sh- I might add the intro music to one of these buttons. So I don't have to like do anything in post, just like chop the, the, the beginning <laughs> and the end off of it and just shoo it out there like put no effort into things like a radio show or something like that. Just get started. Okay. Moment of literal minute of silence. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. Well, we, yeah, we would. I, I think that clip is maybe th- a full 30 seconds. It's like a full 30 yeah. second intro. Um, but yeah, so then I gave you the H six that I had been using again, zoom product, um, which is, I don't know. A lot of people, a lot of people use the H6. It's a it's a sturdy, sturdy running device. I mean, there's zero pro. I've never had any problems with that unit. Yeah, the nice thing is there's a lot more support for this unit too, like just <laughs> tutorials and you know troubleshooting and whatnot. So if I have issues again, at least I can find a community that knows what might be going on. Yeah, no Not doubt. As I mean, much for the old one. <laughs> yeah, well, the only the only problem that the H6 ever had was you can't put a phone around it. If you put a phone around it, it will start to crackle, and it's just interference, and it picks up on that. Um, the, the P8 does it, too. I just think that they, there's something in there that it just doesn't like, which is hilarious because... The old know, one had no issue. 
That is the only the, good thing the about the it. The H4 <laughs> didn't. It was really weird. It really didn't. But yeah, it just, it wasn't, that unit was for <laughs> everybody about 10, 15 years ago. Everybody's using H4N. I mean, it's it's been around the block. A lot of people have used that unit. Yeah. It's funny if you, uh, I know you probably didn't watch the movie, but in um, the first movie of the new Halloween trilogy, mm. the like reporters that are interviewing Michael Myers is using that unit with the external mic function. They interviewed Michael interview. Myers? Yeah. Yeah, they he, go to his prison and no, no, he just, the guy just has his own monologue and he like starts freaking him out and he gets the whole prison, like they're all freaking out because they think he might break free or something, but he doesn't talk or anything. It's really stupid intro. Mm. The The little camera crew that's trying to interview him just a bunch of idiots sweet yeah. sounds like an awesome movie i'll be sure to put yeah. that one on the watch list um there have been some movies some movies though right since we last yes. chatted uh, yeah i don't think i mentioned to you we went to see uh the new spider-man that oh, okay. was amazing good, in good. every way good okay <laughs> you got out to see that what what else has there been there was spider-man the matrix which i didn't watch and i refuse mm-hmm. to now um, yeah, it's not getting good reviews in the last month. <laughs> there's something else. I know I went to the movies. Let's for see. There's one. obviously uh, Bond came out in mm. December, I believe, mm. and then mm. uh, King's Man came out on the 29th, I believe. I feel like there's something there was else. Something I could else. Be wrong. It doesn't matter, but yeah, I mean, obviously Spider Man was was the big one for those of you who don't haven't watched it. I don't care. Here's your spoiler. It was <laughs> it was really really good. Um, mm-hmm. the only critique I had is, and I know this isn't a critique for, for anybody else. Seemingly they really could have cut down some of the dialogue between the spider men. <laughs> like there were just a couple times it's like, all right, just kiss and get it over with boys. You know what I mean? But it yeah. was, it was such a good movie seeing Alfred Molina come back as Dr. Oct, you know, Doc Ock and, um, uh, Willem Dafoe coming back as Green Goblin was because they honestly the best part of the Toby movies for me was the villains. Yeah, I think we can all agree that he had the best villains, the best actors, and the best villains yeah. in general. Because I'd much rather see Sandman than whatever the villains in Garfield's movies were. I can't even think of their names. Never now. watched them. Never watched the Garfield yeah. ones. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, the the lizard guy, the uh, yeah. Jamie Fox was funny in the movie. He he was yeah. He had that yeah, he one was. line where he's like looking at his hair or whatever. It's like, I really like this universe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's something. It was just his delivery was was really really good. Yeah, um, I like the call out to uh, Miles Morales potentially being in the next one too. Like, oh man, I wish we'd have a black Spider Man. Yeah, it, which yeah, we it, had the animated one come out a couple years ago, so I think a lot of people would be excited about that. Yeah, I th- I, th- I think that was a Jamie Foxx line. It's like in some universe, there's got to be a Black Spider Man. Yeah. My, Miles, um, I know that I've seen. I I think the general consensus is that Miles is cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have seen some folks say that they don't really care for that for whatever reason. Like, I I, I don't really know. Um, the exact reason why, but like Miles Morales, isn't the lore that there already is a Peter Parker in his universe, but then like he dies or something or essentially. Yeah. Well, um, so in the movie, the animated movie, yes, it brings in the spider verse. They get kind of some of the wackier ones like this anime mech suit spider-man like a literal mm. pi- pig spider-man uh. is introduced and like a la noir style spider-man okay but yeah they they do end up killing uh the original spider-man in that universe and then he just takes up the mantle okay. but then there's well, like that that was the, the premise in playstation the game. game yeah he doesn't die in that apparently i guess he goes on like vacation and oh, Miles takes over mm, okay. something like that yeah, I mean, I, 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 I don't know. I, I think that there are definitely some folks out there that get a little sensitive about um, what is perceived as like changing or overriding characters. And you know me, I'm not big on overwrites. Uh, you know, th- and that's something in the Star Wars universe. Like, 
people talk about, oh, the world between the worlds is going to allow Dave Floney to erase the sequels. It's like, no, Mm -hmm. it's not. It's not going to happen. You need to get over it. Um, But, I mean, with Miles, I I don't know. I thought he was a cool character. I mean, who cares? Yeah. Yeah. As long as you're not fundamentally changing everything about the the potential hero, it's, it's cool. But, like, even then if you read through any comic lines and there's so many comic lines, I mean, my God, these, these guys change all the time. So it's, Mm -hmm. it's tough. It's a tough thing to, uh, to, uh, get into, but yeah, the, the new Spider-Man movie, very good. All the cameos were good. I, Mm -hmm. I was legitimately like a bit sad at the end of the movie though, like at the conclusion. So it's, it's one of those like weird fate plays too. It's inevitable that, Peter Parker will always lose their parent figure, whether that's uncle Ben or in this case, aunt may. Um, and it's worse because in this universe, nobody knows who Peter Parker is. And the only question I had, because this got brought up in a podcast I listened to, they seem to think that the premise was that Spider-Man wasn't involved in like the Avengers stuff. And the way I thought about it is like, no, he still did everything, but they just don't know who he is. Right. They know of Spider-Man, just not Peter Parker. Yeah. So, so that that's that's what it is, right? I mean, like you, you, you uh, essentially. You, okay, you follow this crap a lot more than I do, but I, I just I listen to well, that. I and think it's like, the only what? Avenger that actually knew his identity was Iron Man, and Iron Man's gone, so that really doesn't well, even Doctor cause Strange. any. True. True. I mean, obviously it, well, from this movie, but like the strange, rest of them, it didn't really Avenger. affect them. Kind of. You could argue he's a lot stronger than any. Well, oh my god! I mean, doc, we, we got to talk a little. Well, we we don't have to because this isn't a Marvel podcast. Oh, go like, for it. Doctor I'm, Strange I'm is OP. Like, yeah, he's he's pretty. And we always talk about powers and scaling and stuff. He's pretty OP. Yeah, he is. And I mean, the mirror universe is ridiculous. Granted, Spider Man does kind of beat him in it, but. The fact that he could just throw any enemy in that and just say goodbye. It, True. <laughs> it'd be amazing to see what he could have done with that. If, like, Thanos wasn't quite as powerful or whatever, he could have just ended it all right there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, Thanos was kind of a B word. But anyway, yeah, yeah so great movie. Really great movie. I think uh, generally favorable for, for most yeah. people, I would have to say. And Did you do- catch, there was one little line, did you catch when uh, Toby was talking with Doc the first time, like, he's back to normal? It's like, oh, Peter, how are you? And he, like, references the little comment he made in his movie, like, trying to do better. <laughs> I, I I like that that, that Dr. Ock actually kind of what he was good towards the end of it. He was trying yeah. to help. That was, because, I, I mean, he was he was never a bad guy. He was bad right. because of, you know, the technology affecting his brain. But, like, he wasn't a bad guy. Um, how'd you like the uh, the inappropriate web joke? Does that come out of other parts of your body? I loved it. I was waiting for them to make that comment. And I was waiting for them to comment on his web slinging in general. It's like, you can make that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was that Which was, was always funny. one of the biggest things, like the difference in the comic books for me. I always enjoyed the the different powers of each Spider-Man, so I'm glad they actually acknowledged that. Yeah, no doubt. Pretty cool stuff. So, uh, yeah, so that's the Spider-Man podcast. Um, <laughs> won't talk about <laughs> Matrix because that's... I, yeah. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't get it. Like it's been completely spoiled for me, and I have I have no interest. I just have no interest anymore in that. It seemed like they really dumbed it down. Uh, I know that the whole thing was supposed to be really meta, but you know, meta is it isn't really as cool as it would have been like five to six, seven years ago. And I, meta can be overdone very easily. I will say that. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's it, it just seemed like there were some statements that were trying to be made that really just didn't really fit the scene. Because, like, the first Matrix is so good. Like, when he fights Agent Smith in the subway, I mean, it's amazing. That yeah. that, that fight sequence is, is fantastic, and, and it feels great. Now, the other one's got a little kooky, but they're still okay. But, yeah, I'm, I'm just not, I'm not interested, but... 
Yeah. So it's anyway, not for everybody. You yeah. know, I, I think that movie is definitely for hardcore Matrix fans only. Otherwise, it's just not something that the general audience will really enjoy. For sure. Honestly. For sure. So I guess before we get into the, the main subject here, uh, probably talk a little bit about the, the, the podcast in general and structurally how we're going to do some things. Now, we, we haven't really talked about this a lot. Right now, it's it's the Book of Boba Fett. That's what we're mm-hmm. reacting to. That's what we're going uh, forward with. Um, of course, we'll only have about course. five more weeks of that after this episode. So. Yeah, and, and we kind of we meant to go and, and actually do a reaction to episode one on time. Uh, didn't happen that way. But, um, I, yeah, I mean, I, I think both me and the Darth need to talk a little bit more about, uh, you know, longer-term plans. I know we, we wanted to get the new Thrawn book looked into eventually, but it's a long boy, and uh, mm-hmm. that's that's definitely a huge time commitment. Um, and and like we've said in the past, we're kind of done with comics. Kind of kind of burn us pretty crispy on that. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, War of the Bounty Hunters really kind of. Well, we have an episode. Did did War of the Bounty Hunters like kill us or end us or whatever the heck <laughs> I put as the title? Burn us out or whatever. So uh, I don't I don't know. Um, exactly what else we'll be doing I, I know that you know there's a potential for more series this year so obviously we'll, we'll keep in touch with those but um i guess now is as good as time as any to say if you guys have anything that you specifically might want us to chat about or whatever build something around uh just let us know i mean we've we've been this podcast is like three years old isn't it been like at it yeah. for like three years yeah. something like that and we've went through comics, books, TVs, movies, rankings, the, the really the whole nine yards. We, we've done a lot. And we still have more in the New Jedi Order. Um, we've got other books that are really neat, I think, uh, that we could get into. The new, actually, didn't uh, a couple books uh, just drop the other day? I think they did. I think I got the notification in my pre-order. Yeah, so Republic. yeah, the the Fallen Star, which is the Claudia Gray book, and then Justina Ireland's Mission to Disaster. So there are a couple of books out there. Good, because uh, I have like three credits to use, and I just pause my Audible account because <laughs> I have nothing to buy. <laughs> well, I I took advantage of the uh, the year. You, you, it was a severely dis- It was like a half off year membership. That was like around. Yeah, Christmas. that was a really good deal. So I did, I did that and got like 12 credits up front. I still have like five more I need to figure out what to do with. Um, so, yeah, we, uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how it all falls. And uh, But, yeah, if you guys have suggestions or things you'd like to hear on the podcast, the best way to say it is just, you know, say it. And, you know, just like email us, bro. All this stuff is down Just in whatever don't say description. It on YouTube, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, they, they still go up on YouTube, but uh, anyway, I guess uh, is it time? Time for I do uh, so. Chapter one and chapter two of the Book of Boba Fett. How appropriate! They're chapters in a book of Boba Fett. I see what you did there. You're so clever. Yeah, somebody was trying to be Disney. very clever. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we'll we'll go th- I, we'll go one at a time, and after episode one, we'll you know we can do our rankings per per episode if that's cool. Um, episode one, you know, they're they're both kind of structured very similarly, where we're effectively telling two stories: mm-hmm. the story of Boba Fett before Mando, so we could call that BM. <laughs> before Mando (laughs) and then AM after Mando uh, as he comes back to take over uh, Jabba's territory. Right. So as we enter episode one, we do get Boba Fett in the Sarlacc pit. And uh, there was a, there was a Patton Oswald thing in, uh, in parks and rec. Yeah, it was perfect. <laughs> a buddy Chase sent it to me, and it was like, you know, 
pan down from the twin sons of Tatooine. Boba Fett's hand goes up through the sand or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. So they didn't really do much with this. He just basically burned the Sarlacc and then somehow got out. And he got like oxygen from a stormtrooper that has been yeah. decaying in there for at least a few years by the looks of it. There's yeah. actually some comments that uh, a lot of people say, oh, it's the one that was looking for the droids. <laughs> could have <laughs> Which been. Which I think would be kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, no, that that absolutely could have been, I guess. You could say that. Uh, oh, look, droids. Oh, look, a penny. <laughs> That's a family guy uh. joke. <laughs> so... He, we, we see him exit the Sarlacc pit. We see the Jawas stealing his armor, beating him. And then he goes on with the, the Tuscans, effectively. Yeah. I think for a question that, granted, I'm not the biggest Boba Fett fan, so I'm kind of unbiased here with everything I'm talking about. But this is definitely something that fans have talked about so much throughout the last... 40 freaking year. Yeah. I mean, how do you escape? How do you escape? Well, there you go. Two minute clip. Hope well, you enjoyed that. And really, <laughs> it was about 12 minutes into the episode before we even got to present day. Boba yeah. Fett in Jabba's palace in a back to tank. I'm assuming mm-hmm. this is a back to tank, some sort of yeah. healing tank. So I'm assuming it's yeah. back to I- I'll be honest with you, man. I'm not really interested in the Tuscan Raider stuff. I'm yeah, me either. Yeah, and, and it's not trying to be mean, but I just don't really care about it as much. Um, I thought I would too after you know everything with Mandalorian, seeing him learning these new fighting styles and being so ba. But yeah, it but just the, the thing is, I didn't care about it in Mando. I really didn't care about. I do not care about the Tuscan Raiders at all. I, I just I don't think about them at all. Yeah. I get it. I'm just not interested. Um, and we can kind of summarize that that storyline because effectively what it winds up being is that he's nominally a prisoner. Uh, he's taken to find the black melons that apparently yeah. Tatooine has that house melon milk. And they're just slightly under the sand everywhere. Yeah. I thought that was the stupidest thing ever. <laughs> Oh, little side note though, because I did watch a little video on um, little Easter eggs. The Rodian mm. that he's captive with. Do you know who that is? Mm. I don't know. If maybe A one told you. No. Nope. Uh, that's the voice actor for Darth Maul. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, just real random. That's interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, well, obviously put a Rodian on Tatooine, and I think everybody's supposed to. Th- oh, Greedo! Oh, yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. You got shot first or whatever. Who cares? Um, so anyway, they're digging for melons that are curiously close to the surface and are attacked by, um, I thought, uh, Clash of the Titans. Yeah. Yeah, I, that was different. I was kind of thinking it'd just be a tiny crate dragon or something, and yeah. that thing pops out. I it's mean, like, it, oh. It didn't look bad or anything, but I just I, I thought Clash of the Titans the 1970s yeah. version but <laughs> or the 60s or whenever the first one came out but i will um, say that they did a very good job making boba look very very beaten up like mm-hmm. all the the yeah. cosmetics for his face being all scarred and dry cracked and yeah. i thought that looked amazing yeah it did I, I thought it was pretty cool too um so anyway he he defeats the monster mm-hmm Brings back the head. Now he's like, he's one of their sort of buddies. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of the story right now (laughs) in episode one, right? I don't think I'm missing anything from the Tuscan side. No, not really. Uh, So then we move on to Tatooine, current day. And Boba and Fennec are holding court in Jabba's palace which is remarkably clean, almost too clean. Mm-hmm. No one there, mind you. He no gets, guards. <laughs> yeah, he gets tribute from uh, a couple people and uh, has a droid who's not a translating droid. 
Yeah. But he was one from the old trilogy, so I did appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, sure, whatever, man. I mean, it's a droid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. Okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> Um, we do learn about the mayor, the, the, the mayor of this, uh, what was the, what was the specific town Moss, uh, was this Moss Espa? Espa? Yeah, it's Espa. Yeah. So the mayor, which we meet in, uh, the second episode who sends his, uh, Twi'lek, uh, Twi'lek, uh, I don't remember what the, what the Twi'lek I think he's uh, a major domo. Is he major domo? I think so. Uh, his second in command, I guess. And yeah. um, they're essentially thinking that Boba's kind of paying them tribute. Mm hmm. Uh, so a bit Which presumptuous. Sets up what the story's going to be right off the bat. Yeah. And, and this is the thing. I'll talk about it more when we get in an episode two, but it's obvious that this isn't going to be a walk in the park. Mm -hmm. At this point, he's taken the castle. He, you know, he, he killed Bib Fortuna, but he's not, he's not like the king of the hill by any stretch yet. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we get a little disrespect from the Twilight and then we go into town. We and get unlike Jabba. Guards. Can't huh? forget the Gamorrean guards. Oh, they true. Yeah, guards. they do get the Gamorreans <laughs> who they were supposed to execute. But they're like, yeah. will you work for me? Join me or die. And they join them because they're pig people. Yeah. And the only good thing about this, it does set up a little bit of uh, uh, a dichotomy between Finnick and Boba because Finnick's definitely going for more of a, you know, heavy-handed approach trying to lead more like Boba, or Boba, excuse me, Jabba, and Boba's trying to lead with respect and, you know, earn people's trust more than just, you know, feed his Sarlacc, so it's interesting. I think that'll be a good little, good little uh, point of contention down the line probably between them. Yeah, we'll see. So then we get into town and we go to sexy Twilight pleasure plant, uh, bar. Yeah. Would you would you like us to clean your helmets? Is that code? Is that code for something? <laughs> Do you want me to wax your spear too? Oh my god! <laughs> <sighs> boy, oh boy. So anyway, the the propri the proprietor of this business, which I don't I don't remember her name. Um. Which they get, I, I thought her the the coloring they definitely made her very skin tone, yeah. Like you know, th th there are twilights of all different colors, but primarily you have blue, green, and then kind of like reddish, right? Yeah, orangeish, reddish sort of. She's just like almost straight up like skin tone. Um, yeah, bro. Like they barely painted her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean you can clearly tell they did, but at the same token, it's like. Yeah, it's like you got a little a little human in there, maybe. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah. The, once he comes in, they they do sort of you know in quotations pay him tribute, but it's it's kind of a bit more relaxed. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I mean, it, it is what it is. It's it's fine. We're we're still working working through it, but uh, they they gave him some coins in his helmet, so that's cool <laughs> I, I was yeah, a little disappointed that they were coins i mean we saw this in the trailer the coin spilling like i like the the bar credits i know yeah. this, i know it's a really yeah. stupid thing to talk about but i like the bar credits you know i, I don't know that's special you know it's something a little different than what you see in every other tv show and movie so yeah but i thought it was fun that we did it was interesting that we did coins and then think of it we, as we, an excuse for him not to have his helmet on all duh, true. Duh, duh. Well, he doesn't wear his helmet <laughs> much. And then what happens? And then we get attacked by assassins with shields. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, it's uh, a good strategy, but at the same time, they're I'm really showing. surprised how easy it is for them to kick his butt because, like, he didn't really fight back very well. Well, this is the thing, and, and we'll talk about it a little bit more after the fighting. I would have just went for their legs, but... What do I right. like? Flame? Go for their legs. Flame their them, legs. Shoot a rocket behind them. 
Yeah, I, they're, they're, something. <laughs> yeah, but the Gamorrean guards come out, and even Fennec was having a little trouble here. Yeah, she was getting shocked up pretty bad. Yeah. I'm surprised and they we, didn't kill off one of the Gamorreans yet. True. Like, these are very strong Gamorreans. <laughs> that is that is very true. Because um, these are like elite assassins. And Well, okay. <laughs> I mean, let's Supposedly. not let's not get cr- <laughs> what were they called the something breaking wind uh, <laughs> order of the night wind. I yeah. thought that was a cheesy sound. Apparently, it's something from what is it Clone Wars? I guess. Yeah, I don't remember it. I don't know. But... I thought they sounded stupid. We're the, yeah. we're the order of the night wind. <laughs> Whatever. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we did get the super crazy Boba killing some guy face, which is yeah. which is super fun. He he just has a he has great <laughs> facial features, which is why they take the helmet off because he's just got great expressions. Yeah. You just imagine that now in like any old scene <laughs> of the old movies yeah. or the TV shows or anything, just that face causing carnage. Yeah, no or doubt. The comics. <laughs> Then we get to see a little bit of Fennec scaling the roofs with our Nightwind guys who are playing leapfrog with each other. Yeah. They weren't even parkouring. They were just basically leapfrogging like that. Well, that frog from Mandalorian. Yeah. Old frog lady. Oh, um, swing around the wall yeah. three times. Let's just show it in detail three times. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, we, we both know that Fennec is, is pretty sick. She's able to uh, capture one of our assassins here. You know, mm-hmm. one thing they haven't talked about yet is her robot middle section. Yeah, they haven't mentioned that, mentioned that since Mandalorian. I would be kind of interested to see a little flashback of that. Well, these assassins, they have energy weapons. And I kind of thought about that as I was watching it. It's like, what happens if they thrust one of those in her midsection? I mean, she's a part robot. True. Very true. When it shut down her servos or whatever. Maybe. Is- I don't know. I think. Because isn't it like, it, it's not her heart, but it's everything below that. Yeah, it's too. Just her midsection. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's everything. Her guts. <laughs> she doesn't have it. She's got they robot got guts. Out. Yeah. Who knows? She might. She might be more robot than woman now. <laughs> so anyway, Boba is. Uh, he's hurt. They've got to put him back in the juice, so that he can, you know, get all juicy. They didn't even take off his stuff. They just threw him yeah. in it. I think it would have been funny to see them struggle to figure out how to use the thing. I mean, they're not very smart. <laughs> They've never been very smart. Um, and I actually, is that, I think that's the end of, yeah, that's the end of basically the stuff. They just throw them in the juice, and then we get mm-hmm. back into the flashback. We get to the second part of the flashback. Yeah. For, so, for how long the episode was, not a lot happened. He got tribute from like four people and he got attacked. That's all we get in this episode. Yeah. I haven't a lot of interesting dialogue or anything going on, honestly. Yeah, not really. Um, we're talking about the first episode was 38 minutes, essentially. Essentially yeah. 38 minutes. Much shorter than the second, but still. Much not a lot shorter happened. than the second. Like, very weird that the short one is the first episode. Well, no, yeah, normally the first on. episode is, it's like, is an like an hour. I mean, because yeah. we're just trying to cram everything down your throat. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of the story. Was there anything else we needed to point out about the first episode? No, I don't think so. All right, dude, we'll give it a rating. What, what do we got? Uh, out of 10 and why? Give me your best goodreads.com synopsis. <laughs> you know, this year we should be a little more concise with our reviews so we don't contradict ourselves. But uh, honestly, there was nothing spectacular about this episode. There was nothing terrible about it. So I'm not going to like give it a four or five, but I give it like a six and a half. But I won't watch it again. I'll have no reason to. It's just yeah. there was nothing interesting that happened. I just summarized it, you know, a minute ago. You get like four tributes, a little contention with the mayor, a couple of Gamorrean guards, and a flashback with Tuscans. That's it. Mm-hmm. We don't get anything. I mean, my thing is, if they didn't want to focus on present day Boba, why didn't we at least get more time with like him escaping the Sarlacc or, you know, maybe throw a little money at it and we get like this 
re-rendering of the fight and you see like CGI Luke or something, something like give us something kind of cool. I don't know. It just, yeah, I wasn't impressed with the episode. Didn't get me excited for the series at all. Well, you're not the only one. I mean, I, I text a few people. Um, I know that Lindsay from clashing sabers, you know, we, we talk about the star Wars stuff still from time to time. And I know that, you know, I, I think she was a little underwhelmed. Uh, I know there are a couple of other people that were underwhelmed. I mean, for for a um, start of a series, you're starting a brand new show. And I guess what they thought was going to be the most shocking thing was him escaping the Sarlacc pit, but they didn't really explain it at all. Yeah. And um, the only thing that I, I thought about when I was watching this that I didn't discuss earlier was... He mentioned that he's having the dreams. And yeah. early on, you know, when we read that book, the short story from Tales from Jabba's Palace, there's almost like a psychic thing going on with, with the Sarlacc. And I mm-hmm. thought that maybe this was going to be some sort of like connection that he has that he's going to have to figure out. Now, after chapter two, episode two, I don't think that's anything. I think that can be attributed to something else. But yeah, um, yeah it was it was a bit underwhelming. But I think it. I remember my initial reaction was, but this could be good. Yeah, I mean, it didn't set anything up to be bad necessarily. Yeah. It just didn't really do anything exciting. Right. But yeah, Although it I wasn't... can't really say that. I was all that excited when we get when we got our reveal like mini scene at the end of Mandalorian. So I don't know what I was expecting, honestly. I guess. So anyway, yeah, as far as a rating, I'm probably gonna be just a wee bit more generous. Probably give it a seven point two. It's it's uh it's average. It's very yeah. average. It's not a very strong start to anything, but it at least gave me a little bit of hope that it could be interesting long term. Yeah. Until we talk about episode two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, episode two, the repeat of episode one. <laughs> well, yeah, and here's the thing, um, uh, and we'll, we'll go through the episode, but I want to talk about this for a second. What would you think would be better? If you dedicated an episode to the backstory and then you march present day at the very end of the episode, like we go through all the Tuscan stuff and then at the very end of the episode, we see him sitting on the throne taking tribute and then we march into the next episode. Or would you prefer it to be done like it is where it seems like every week we're going to have to sit through Tuscan Raider, which I am now naming chapter two subtitle Dances with wolves. <laughs> Essentially. They copied yeah. the plot. I mean, the, the, yeah. I, 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 and I, I don't want to rag. This series is becoming very unoriginal. Yeah. Yeah, very quickly. And I would argue in a normal size series, yes, I would prefer to have one full backstory episode. But in a seven-part series, I don't think we have time. I don't think we had time to put a single thing of the Tuscans in this episode. I think a 15-minute backstory, jump in, no more flashbacks afterwards would have been better. But a full dedicated episode for a seven-episode series? Well, no, well, no time. Well, here, here's the thing. The first episode was 38 minutes. If you went an hour with that you could have gotten all the Tuscan crap out of the way and you could have still had the, the footage from present day episode one sure. in episode one. And then you just move on. Yeah. But the problem is I don't think we're done with Tuscans yet. No, we're not. After this episode, Tuscans. we're 100 There's still a decent gap Tuscans. between what we saw in this and Mandalorian. I think we're going to have to see even more of it, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. So, because what is it like the the crate dragon episode is where we get the reveal, not the reveal, but like that's when you start seeing Boba wandering with the hood up. Mm, good question. Don't remember. I'd have to go back. 
Yeah. I think it was but I'm pretty that. sure it's around that time. Well, no, we saw, we saw before, him. But... We saw him when he shot Fennec, which was like, God, was that episode two mm, of yeah, season yeah, two yeah. or something like that? Yeah. So we, I so mean, I'd we, imagine we didn't we're going to at least get to that point. Then, but well, let's just say, wh- hold on, what? I think we're going to at least see another flashback or two up until when we get to that point. Then up I, until what I, point? I, when he runs into Finnick, or at least the end of his time with the Tuscans. I think oh, so, for you're, the so you're saying we'll that, that in the flashback, we're going to effectively recap Mando. Yeah. Oh, my fe- my <sighs> fear is we're going to have flashbacks for every single episode yeah. of this season. <laughs> more than likely. Yeah, I don't really, I don't really need to know any more about that. Hey, by the way, what did you think about the theme song? Uh, okay, I'll go first. I thought it I guess sucked. I'd, I guess I'd have to give it another listen, but I, I can't even remember it right I thought now. It, I thought it sucked. I didn't like it at all. <laughs> Th- there's something about it that sounds like some popular, like some pop song. I can't place it because yeah. look, Mando's theme and Mando's music was so good. Iconic. I didn't Iconic. like. I didn't really like the the boba theme. That I, I again. I only. I watched the episode once, so I'd have to go back and listen to it again. And maybe next week I might change my mind. But I, I didn't. I didn't enjoy it uh, in the episode. Um, but no, you're you're probably right about flashbacks. We'll probably have way more flashback. I just don't care. I don't. I don't. I want current day. I want the gangster stuff. Like, get. I don't want a west. Another western. That's Mando. I want yeah. a gangster movie. Yeah, and the problem with flashbacks is it really takes away from you potentially fleshing out stories down the line. I don't. The reason it was so great after watching the original trilogy to get to flesh everything out with the side content is because there was some question as to what happened. We're not getting a question as to what happened. We're getting it all answered, but it's taking away from the main story we're trying to tell. And I just... I, there's more flashback in this than there is in Mando, period. And Mando has a lot more content. Well, I mean, <laughs> realistically, in this episode, we got... I mean, my God. I, I'm just... I'm it scrolling. was half. I'm scrolling well, through the episode <laughs> now. Uh it's more than half. We were at about minute 14-ish, 1430, and that's where our mainline story ends. So that's another almost 40 minutes of just yeah. Tuscan. And a painfully long amount of time just in training with that weapon. Yeah, that and look. we'll never see again, by the way. Well, look. We'll never see it now that he has his armor. He's yeah. never going to use that. Well, the the weapon is cool. I mean, it's it's sure. you know it, it harkens back to Tamir Morrison's like actual heritage. Heritage, yeah. And I and I think it's I think it's neat. I get it, but like this is such a uh, last samurai or uh, mm, yeah. uh, dances with wolves thing. They're very clearly. Uh, effectively appropriating Native American tribal history uh, right down to hallucinogenics. And in in the case of, you know, instead of peyote, we have a lizard that burrows into your brain. Yeah. I mean, spoilers, sorry. But yeah, I just... And who cares about that train? F that train. Why is there a train? It's not important. Why is there a train and why is it affecting the Tuscan Raiders? They're nomads. The train is set in that one spot. It's going to go through there every time. Stay away. <laughs> Why are you shooting it? Yeah, y- <laughs> y- you know, you know what would make me care about Tuscan Raiders? If we unmasked. Dialogue? Ma- no, if we unmasked them. Yeah, that too. And actually being able to understand them, what they're saying. I'm sorry, I can never care about a character I can't understand. If I can't get some whoa, form whoa, of... Whoa, whoa, pause. Oh, geez. Well, <laughs> well ser- seriously, communication is so important in any type of movie. What what would be a foreign film without subtitles? 
you'd be lost. You'd well, have no it, connection to the character. Yeah, Unless I think it's it, very good at visual storytelling, which Tuscans have never been good at that. Well, I, I think the point in this was they did eventually give subtitles, but it was as Boba Fett was learning more about them. Yeah. And learning some of the sign language stuff, so it's it's a little different. But yeah, I just it, it is it, it is overly western to the point where well and it, it's not just western it's spaghetti western it's yeah. like the westerns that were shot in italy like all of clint eastwood's movies shot in italy uh there's a bad train person we've got to rob give back to the the poor and we claim the the thing and i'm gonna fight with the natives that I just killed in the last movie, uh, you know, and all this sort of jazz. Yeah. It, it just, it, it, it hits a really false note for me. Yeah. Um, because it, it's so unoriginal. Because, yeah. Plus they scale it wrong because by the end of this episode, more Tuscans have died than there were in this camp. Yeah. <laughs> to begin with. It seemed like it. Yeah. It seemed like it. And I think that they were also trying to highlight the fact that there are more tribes and like not all tribes are a bunch of like killy people who just want to murder and steal and everything. So you're, but we you're, already got that with the crate dragon with Mandalorian. Yeah. <laughs> but the, again, that is the, the attempt to tap into the spaghetti Western Native American theme stuff. Like we get it. But if I want to watch a movie like that, there are other movies that I can mm -hmm. watch. I mean, movies with like really good actors and like authentic actors. Yeah. I mean, despite the fact that they did uh, plant Daniel Day Lewis in Last of the Mohicans, they actually did cast Native American <laughs> actors in it, you know? Yeah. So I, I'm just, I'm just saying that like I clearly see what you're doing. I don't really care for it. I, that's all, that's all I'm saying. I just don't really care for it. I don't care about the, the Tuscans. I don't care about this attempt to do spaghetti westerns. I wanted a gangster movie. I wanted, uh, I wanted what the, the trailers showed. I wanted you know. Boba Fett to come in like the Punisher. Like, mm -hmm. give me vengeful Boba Fett and Fennec who are going in with Tammy guns and just you know shooting up the place, or something like that. Like, give me an anti-hero, not some attempt at connecting with the land that doesn't make any sense for this character. It just doesn't. Well, it's almost like it's used as a turning point to make Boba Fett a good guy. And they're using yeah. these Tuscan scenes as the reason for it. But it just doesn't hit home because Boba Fett, before meeting the Tuscans, would be the type of person just to wipe these people out. And they did nothing to give him a reason not to. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just... <sighs> I don't get it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're they're, they're just trying to reinvent the character. Didn't we just talk about it, the, this at the beginning of the episode with like Marvel and a bunch of angry nerds? <laughs> Stop changing my characters. Um, yeah, I guess so. I guess we're <laughs> we're the same. Well, but, but I mean, for me, I just I I'm not I'm not a big fan. And then even when we get this part where Boba goes out into the desert to see what he can do about the train. We just run on this random bar with a couple of humans and some other aliens that are in here causing a ruckus. And what happens? Crappier the, version of the first episode of Mandalorian. Well, the, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, yeah, the, the, the sweet kid and his gal are out just having a drink and, and he, he gets roughed up and has to be saved by the hero. So... Yeah. And yeah, we but steal I mean, they, a bunch of speeder bikes. It's great. Yeah, from the from the Hell's Angels here. And oh my god, dude. <laughs> they even I had they had biker coats. Yeah. And and the the montage of teaching the Tuscans how to ride completely lost me. Like, yeah, I could see where some people would find it really I skipped it. Entertaining, but it was so terrible. I skipped through it. I skipped through it because it's like, oh, they had one try to jump from one bike to the other three friggin' times. Mm -hmm. Did we really need to see that three times? It's a training montage. You show them fail once, succeed once. I mean, how many montages do we need in one episode? Uh, I need a montage. Essentially. 
and they would have been wiped out right away. I'm sorry, that was so unrealistic. All of those armed guards in that train would have wiped. There was four of them, and one gets wiped out right away. <laughs> so stupid. Yep. Although the stuff at the top of the train was kind of cool, I'll give you that. Like well, but the, what is that the a rehash of the Tuscan? What is it a rehash of? It's a rehash well, of Solo. It's solo. It's Solo. It's absolutely Solo. The second I saw the train, I thought of Solo, <laughs> even though it wasn't the right type of train. Still. <sighs> yeah, I, you know. You, you know, one thing I thought that they did a really good job of, though, is making. Boba Fett like look big like tall big yes yeah there were very few characters bigger than him in this and I thought that was kind of cool it's totally untrue because there were a lot yeah he's short (laughs) but he he looked he looked imposing throughout yeah most of this episode which was which was good I think that that that's a good that's the Tom Cruise play yeah so I thought that that was that was smart made him look bigger than the Wookiee (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, that's that's pushing your luck a little bit there. Um, so yeah, uh, he steals the bikes. They attack the train. Have a montage. I mean, the train attack it was fine, I guess. You know, you had his little training buddy who like took out like five of them on his own. Yeah. All you see is this little stick pop up and like gently tap him on the back of the head. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we had this this weird little robot who was controlling the train. <laughs> Little kind of like spider bot. Yeah. That was the only thing that I kind of appreciated was the goofy, wacky controls of the train. I thought that was a little bit entertaining. You know, that was actually an interesting thing. The um the way in which they shot that, there were sequences that made it feel very, very old school, like, like sped a up old film. Steam. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, no, yeah. It, it was like the filming technique because it, it or the animatronics. Yeah. Like, like there were parts would almost when look like was rotating the yeah. one thing that caused the engine to flare up. That was, that yeah. was kind of cool. It was, it, it was, was interesting, it, but it, it definitely <laughs> felt like it felt like old technology. You know what I mean? It yeah. wasn't like super dressed up, which I personally can appreciate. Yeah. I do um, appreciate the blending of old and new, you know, decent, really good CGI. Like when they're having their little, you know, race to the train the cgi for that with boba and the one guy on the back it was actually decent and i can appreciate they'll add that in with some more practical effects that are still yeah you know i mean they they pay montage they're not amazing but they pay montage definitely to yesteryear films well i i mean i i personally like it because you can over cgi everything real quick Uh, and star wars has (laughs) it definitely has george lucas did it too and he went back and re CGI'd a lot of stuff in there. Yeah. Um, so then I guess as we kind of roll through the Tuscan line, then we go for happy, trippy, trippy McBall's lizard time. Um, I don't like this part. I mean, I, I, I understand what they're trying to do, but it's the same damn thing that they've done with all the peyote dreams and the psychedelics and everything. I'm mm-hmm. not. I'm just not really down with it. And I thought that the imagery looked really dated. This yeah. was the part where I thought yeah. it started to look hokey. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're just going to let a lizard go into your brain. You know what's making you trip out is that the lizard has destroyed part of your brain. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you're not even licking it. It's going in through your nose, dude. <sighs> I don't know. It's just, uh, did we need it? I mean, <laughs> did we need all, to pad all, the episode with that? All they needed was to get a uh, magic carpet ride playing or like, <laughs> you know, some, some Cypress Hill tune or whatever, you know, you just get like some trippy music, you know, anything from the movie, how high, <laughs> <You know? laughs> Hey bro. Are you f- 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 feeling all right? <laughs> I like to dream. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think Tamir would be pretty funny as a high person. <laughs> I mean, I think movie. he'd be hilarious, just stone sober, personally. Yeah. Uh, 
But anyway, he goes out to find a stick to make his his staff. So mm-hmm. we did learn that the staff that he had was indeed his. It wasn't like one he stole or one he was given. He he actually went to the magical desert tree where there's water but no water and there's like goblins in it, tree goblins. And it like this is where it gets hokey and I started thinking like what are we watching? Are we watching like The Dark Crystal now or some like it's like oh tentacles oh i'm in tentacles oh no i'm in a tree oh no i just like to have boba have a conversation with a jedi explaining the process of picking his crystal it's like that's cute now let me tell you my story of how i got my staff let me (laughs) let me tell you something brother (laughs) when i built my staff i had a lizard in my brain I got almost strangled by a tree until I broke off a stick. (laughs) (sighs) It it, it just, it felt so artsy fartsy, like something that would be in Cannes or something like that. Or, you know, some stupid film festival in Colorado or whatever, the wave crashing at the end. And then you just see Finn. (laughs) Yeah. What are we doing, man? What are we doing? So he comes back with the stick, and then they fashion his his staff. So it it dances with uh, wolves, meets the last samurai. Then we have a little practice session, just you know, yeah, whatever. Everybody, everybody together around the fire. (sighs) Yeah, sure, that happened. And then it was it. Then it was it. He got robes. He got like Tuscan robes, and then. Yeah, they they sort of thrusted their sticks at the fire and did a little dance, and then uh, and then uh, I guess I guess this might have been sort of like it, would this be like a haka or whatever? Is that what that's called? The sort of like more traditional like Maori I, dance. I think it's like a haka. Yeah, I'm not sure what the terminology is. I wonder if that's kind of what the what the the sort of the inspiration behind that. Again, that would be a highly Tamara Morrison sort of like a call in, which is yeah. The, I mean, if if some of that was you know his backstory, his traditions, his family heritage, and everything, that would be kind of cool. It's not It'd Boba be Fett, than, though. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. We're so focused on. Tamir's stuff that we're not focused on the fact that this is just a clone who's yeah, a bounty hunter. <laughs> yeah, and, and again, I, I don't want to like degrade, downgrade it or anything. It's just, it was just meh. Again, yeah. I, I don't really, I don't. I wanted a gangster movie, not Dances with Wolves meets Last Samurai. Mm-hmm. I just didn't want to see it. I've already seen this. And movies. maybe we'll still get it. You know, we're only on the second <laughs> episode. There is still potential, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not excited. <laughs> yeah, for sure. About it. Well, let, let's talk a little bit about the present day stuff because there was, again, a whole 15 minutes of it. Um, wow. <laughs> so we, we, we had our assassin and we did a callback to Jabba's palace, throwing uh, the assassin in the uh, Rancor pit and opening the door. And, uh, you know, because they're afraid of no man. Well, meet the Rancor. Oh, I'll tell you everything was the mayor. Oh, please don't eat me. There's nothing there. <laughs> By the way, I really hope that they get the rancor from Rebels. The little to be honest, young one that they save. <laughs> I wish there was a rancor in there. I thought that would have been sick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so anyway, we go to see the mayor. Um, who is voiced by our director, if I remember correctly. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, let me look that back up, make sure I was actually, uh, correct on that. I know I have it in here somewhere. Yeah. Robert Rodriguez, uh, voiced the mayor. By the way, this might be just kind of mean to the actor, but when Boba Fett's going into the mayor's office and that one receptionist dude is talking to him, didn't he just seem super out of place? Insane. It's an it's he's probably like some comedian like they did in Mando, but it was it was yeah it was really out of place. It felt yeah. really kind of strange. Awkward. 
<laughs> like, who are you? I'm long haired mustache guy number one. <laughs> Like, I know this is most Espa, but do we not have like any dress code or anything? Like, you don't have to shave. I don't, I, e- even this sort of like waiting room felt out of place for Tatooine yeah. for me, though. Yeah. I just didn't really, it's, didn't really connect that well with it. Yeah. I don't know. Even the major domo is like way too nice. Obviously, I'm sure that there's something there, but. Mm. It's very weird for Tatooine. Yeah, well, anyway, they barge their way in, um, you know, accuse the mayor of, like, you know, sending this guy, and he's just like, ah, well, just shoot him. You you don't do that. Bad boy. It wasn't me. Why don't you go back to that Twilight Pleasure Club and, like, look at things and, you know, are you threatening me? Are you talking to me? I don't know if I like the mayor all that much. Like, I don't really get it. I know this to me just made Boba look really stupid. This whole interaction. Yeah. <laughs> Cause yeah. like he never thought, I mean, did you think it was the mayor or did you think it was the Twilight? Cause I kind of thought it was the Twilight from the beginning. Uh, I mean, I think it'll turn out to be none of them. I think it'll turn out to be another player that we haven't met yet. Yeah. Personally. So yeah, whatever. I, I don't. I don't know. I think it'll be somebody else. But um, yeah, the the mayor. The mayor effectively does call him out, though. You know, right. And which again, at this point in a gangster movie, would have just shot all of them. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a gangster movie. Got to respect authority. So, even though he's technically trying to be the authority, yeah, well, <laughs> whatever. Yes, they serve at his pleasure, I suppose, sarcastically. Yeah. So then we go back to Pleasure Palace. Um, like, you haven't heard? You don't know? <sighs> and then we get a couple of huts, the twin huts. Yeah, Jabba's cousins. Mm. Yeah, who uh, <laughs> come in on that super bent platform. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was kind of funny that they did that. Yeah, I mean, that was kind of entertaining. I think this is the first time I've ever seen two huts sitting on the same platform. It was, mm, yeah, it was a sight. <laughs> well, they're not the buff huts from the comics, you know, so <laughs> Thank they're, God. they're not like... But buff the hut, yeah. So. Yeah. So yeah, but our our head Twilight, uh, which I, I I don't I don't know what her name is from the um, bar. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, basically tells them uh, about the twins, and Bubba's like, "No, the twins are too busy with the, the stuff on now Hutta." And then you hear drum beats, and the twins are brought in. I guess. Now, there's something about this that, again, if this were a gangster movie, uh, Boba and Finnick would have just shot these two, like yeah, killed them. Someone in the would street. have died at the end of this. Well, they just have like just regular people that are just carrying the thing. It doesn't even look like any of their people have guns. Just yeah. shoot them. Right. <laughs> End it. They even threaten them <laughs> in the conversation, like we probably should just kill you, but well, we're not going to because blood, bloody business isn't good for business or some stupid line like that. It's well, like we, no, you're huts. You just kill people. Listen, when they kill one of us, we kill three of them. When they put one of us in a body bag, we put four of them in a body bag. You know, it's it's, it's the it's the Chicago way. Yeah. And I love the logic behind it. It's like, oh, you have no claim to this. Like, well, neither did Bib Fortuna, but you let him take over and well, run it for how long? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, Bib was, um, yeah, whatever. He was, he was, potentially could have been control. working for them, but still, just dumb. Yeah, well, but again, I mean, if, the, again, if this were a gangster movie, you would have just shot the two twins. Cause again, the only person that they have with a gun 
is our uh, character from Afro, which I always have to look at the name because I call him something different. Black uh, Chrysanthemum. Yeah, I always called him Black Chrysanthemum when we were doing the comics <laughs> or the book or whatever. It doesn't matter. Just a little um, BK. Yeah, BK. So the uh, Wookiee. And uh, very well done. Oh Actually, yeah, I, I would really cool. I would happen to agree. But th- there again, they've been doing live action Wookies uh, really oh, yeah. well. So this has brought into some um, consideration of if we're going to see Afra, mm-hmm. maybe as a test out to see if they have a proper actress and see if audiences really care. Because I know there's been talk about Afra live action for a long time. Um. And I think at least then we couldn't be so unambiguous with the uh, comic book character anymore. We'd actually have to pick a race. God, I am so <laughs> tired of the of the comic depictions. They're different every single time. It's like yeah. she. I'm pretty sure she's always been described as an Asian woman, right? As far as I know. <laughs> but they they will they will butcher. I don't want to say butcher, but they will just change drastically. In yeah. every comic, every cover, everything, she always looks different. Sometimes she feels a little whitewashed. Sometimes it seems like it's correct. It's just the weirdest thing that they do with her. I, I've never understood that. But yeah, if they could standardize it in live action, you know, with a with a you know whoever they were to choose. But I, I would say the only thing about Afra is I think that the only way that Afra works if she's solo. I don't. Yeah. I don't know that it would work if they just plugged her in here. Yeah, I don't. I mean, the thing is, I, I completely understand is everyone's excitement. Obviously, they're tied together, but BK also has a history with Boba Fett. He doesn't necessarily have to be a part of this just because of Afra. I mean, they've done work together for Vader. They both worked under Jabba. They're they know each other. It it doesn't have to be Afra. Yes, I would love to see live-action Afra. don't get me wrong, but I don't think this is the time and place for live-action Afra. I mean, my God, it might be if it, everything's going this way. Um, Maybe. Yeah, so anyway, there's a bit of a standoff. There's really no deal, but there's a standoff, and the huts are, um, you know, carried off. Would be a good time to use this rocket. I mean, it would have been a good time to just send two blaster bolts at him and kill him. I, I don't know what to say. I mean, you're effectively two against one Wookiee. And, and granted, that's a formidable Wookiee, but like just at range, just shoot everybody. I, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm just evil or something, but it's like I want a gangster movie. Sorry. Yeah. The only thing that logically makes sense is he has no army. Yeah. He would have no way to retaliate if the Huts retaliated for their death. And then you hop on your ship and you find one or you go somewhere yeah. else. I don't know. That's the Cares. other thing. How are we going to find that many allies in five more episodes? Other than like nameless, faceless foot soldiers. But are we going to make any new connections? Are we going to have any interesting character development? Well, any I mean, if we, only use, if we only use 15 minutes of the episode to advance the story and the rest is all backstory, then no. Yeah. We have go to mayor's office, go back to Pleasure Den, get confronted by Huts for a couple minutes. That's it. Yeah. It's, it's worse than the last episode. Yeah, and I don't think current Boba Fett understands, and this is something the mayor said, you really don't understand how to run a family. Like, a family is crime. Crime family. Yeah. Like, that, that you rule by fear. <laughs> they pay right. you because you're sca- they're scared of you. They don't pay you because they respect you. I mean, yeah, you might do some good here and there if you're freaking Don Corleone over here, you know, like... Uh, make him an offer that he can't refuse. Okay, you as you just favor. murdered 15 people because of it. I don't know what to say. It's like, yeah, the whole rule by respect is great and all, but it's not like we have nothing in history that tells us that even in, with the best of intentions, people still aren't murdered <laughs> despite yeah. being the best choice. So come on. Well, and this is not a political city. 
this is a city on Tatooine. <laughs> you have to rule with some fear. Yeah. <laughs> it's the only way. You don't have a choice. There's a reason Jabba flourished <laughs> as long as he did. My name is Boba Fett, and I am here to bring democracy to Tatooine. <laughs> Shut up. Well, yeah. Well, yes, I do have a Sarlacc, but I haven't used him. And I also have a Rancor, but I haven't used him either. <laughs> Why do you have so many guns? I only have a very few guns. Don't don't worry. Uh, don't worry That's about the guns. That's all political schmearing from my adversaries. Don't you worry about those huts. What about your vice president? Isn't she like a highly trained assassin? No. D- yeah, no, kind she's a of. Robot. I mean, she's sort of that, but she she hasn't killed anyone in a long time. Hey, listen, I am pro droid. Look at her stomach. <laughs> I employ droids. I do not enslave them. <laughs> Oh boy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> These two Gamorians, they will testify to oh, my good died. character. Hold on, my one Gamorian. <laughs> oh and boy. I don't even I do like how they mention that they really need to get a protocol droid. Because that one guy giving tribute, he has like no idea what he's saying. <laughs> yeah, the the Trandoshan. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, All the right. one that he used to work for, apparently. Yeah. Are you ready to move on, give a rating? Yeah. All right, what's your rating? Uh, I'm going to have to give it a six because I didn't like it as much as the last episode. Too much Tuscan crap. Yeah, it didn't Too advance much. the story at all. It was just all Tuscan Raiders. It was a step back. <laughs> it was literally a step back in storytelling because we got, uh, what, five minutes less in present day. With a longer episode. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like almost, what, 15 minutes longer? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, no, it, it wasn't a good episode. Yeah. I didn't like it. Um, yeah. I, I don't like what they're doing with the Tuscan Raiders. I, I don't like that we're effectively appropriating some sort of weird cross-pseudo Native American cultural thing here just with alien lizards and stuff. I don't I don't really care for that all that much. And it's not a sensitivity thing or anything like that. I mean, my God, I have very little Native American that's came through our line. I just don't particularly care for the portrayal. Um, and I think some of it was done really poorly. And again, I wanted a gangster movie. I've said it so many times, it's probably repetitively annoying. It's like, I wanted a, I wanted a gangster movie. I didn't want a what Western. I already saw a Western Mando was the Western. And that was satisfying because you know why? Because he didn't hesitate to pull the trigger. Yeah. Boba Fett needs to be a gangster. Or that's close how the you, door. yeah. I mean that, that's how you rule Chicago. You know, you just, you gotta, you gotta be a little bit more BA than that. Um, We're a third of the way into this and Boba Fett has killed one person. No. I mean it's one assassin. Impl- it's implied that he might have killed others, but you never know. Then we don't have a kill counter. So <laughs> anyway, um no, I didn't particularly enjoy the episode at all. It was definitely a step back. Um I gave the first one a seven point two. I'm probably gonna say six two. Six 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 yeah, six, sure, six two. I'm that's where I'm at. This show needs to get better, like mm-hmm. immediately. <laughs> yeah. Not that we're not going to watch it or anything, but it just, it would be a waste of an opportunity, I think, if it didn't Yeah, I mean, get we're better. contractually obligated to watch it, mm. but we won't like it. That's why we, we might ca- want to go back to the comics. <laughs> That's why we came back. The Disney checks ran out. Yeah. God. We're loyal for the shows. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Look, I mean, there's. There, there's a lot of potential here. It just, I feel like it's just being squandered in almost a meme. I mean, you had these stupid montages. They were bad. Yeah. They were bad. Yeah, and when you can't think of an even semi-original story for your flashbacks and you literally just copy and paste multiple movies, like literally this is a storyline we've seen a million times, yeah. Then why are we wasting half of the show with it? Right. If, if you can't come up with an original story, do a five minute training montage, show that you got along with the Tuscans, and move on. 
So anyway, that is episodes one and two, of Book of Boba Fett, the highly anticipated series that we got instead of season three of Mandalorian. Merry Christmas <laughs> and a happy New Year! Um, look, I mean, there, there's more on the horizon for Star Wars, but boy, oh boy, have we been disappointed! Anything lately. good? <laughs> Anything good? <laughs> I mean, even right down to the higher public, we we we've been kind of yeah. disappointed. You, you know? know, we're a year into High Republic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A little I over know. a year now, and we're hitting, what do what, we have to what show is this for? Phase it? three, I think we're hitting. Uh huh. I hope Claudia pulls something. Ooh. I hope she does because she's normally one that I really enjoy reading. But if she can't save the the ship. I don't know who can. They're giving a lot of books to Justina Ireland. I mean, granted, it's all pretty much Vernestra, which mm-hmm. aside from the last Vernestra book, which kind of de- depowered her, de- took her down a couple pegs, um, she was proving to be a pretty cool character. So hopefully they turn her back around. But I don't know, man. We'll I think see. we just need to hire the old crew from uh, New Jedi Order to <laughs> save the day. Yeah. <laughs> With their cheesy, repetitive dialogue. You know how I talked about the world between the worlds being such a stupid idea to erase everything? So anyway, you want to go between (laughs) the world between the worlds so we can just erase everything? (laughs) Start over? Thanos snap the... the Thanos snap three of the (laughs) nine movies out of existence and half the books. (laughs) No, I wouldn't snap the movies. I'd snap some of the, the... some better we need some comics books. every comic <laughs> war of the bounty hunters gone <laughs> yeah <laughs> permanent snap you oh ain't coming boy. back oh boy we we need a doctor strange spell for that yeah i want to get rid of the war of the bounty Put it hunters. In another universe <laughs> okay can i also get rid of like some of the high republic books stop talking <laughs> stop changing the spell the sequels <laughs> Ah! <laughs> you changed the spell five times while I was casting it. Well, I thought of a lot of things that sucked. <laughs> yeah, and and again, uh, we don't like to be doomsayers or anything, but th- there's some missed opportunities, and that's all it is. So again, yeah, optimism. Hopefully, Book of Boba Fett gets better. Haven't been ultra impressed so far, um, but I will see. It has potential. Yeah. I'll even try to be positive on, in a negative way. Even if it ends up sucking, we only have to watch five more episodes. <laughs> so you think. Well, this year. Yeah. All right, folks. Well, that's that's basically it. Shaking off the rust, getting back to some recording. Uh, again, yeah, if you uh, have any ideas for things you'd like us to talk about, just uh, you know, email us at TC Plan Podcast. You can find us on Twitter at TC Plan Podcast, and we're also out there on Facebook too. Uh, so, yeah, interact. Love to hear from you. Uh, what was your reaction to the Book of Boba Fett? Did you have a positive reaction? Did you think it was better than what we portrayed it as? What are your ratings? All that good stuff. Did we offend you? Yeah. How much did we offend you during one episode? How uh, much did do you, you love Tuscans? Did you us. enjoy the, the, the crossover hit that was Dances with Wolves and The Last Samurai starring Tom Cruise and Kevin Costner? <laughs> I don't know. Dances with Tuscans. <laughs> Dances with Samurai. <laughs> so anyway, I think that's about it for this week. So you guys enjoy the rest of your week. And as always, may the Force be with you.